What's up, folks? So we're going to take a look at how to do this thing um, called the selfie stick and assemble this. And we're going to learn about assemblies and a bunch of different things we can do in assemblies. Um, so you should have this uh, this thing and all of its parts. I'm going to hide myself for a second and talk about whoops and talk about um, what's down here in your tabs. So we got a bunch of different things. A bunch of different parts uh, that are going to make up this selfie stick and then at the end of your list are these things that say step on them and if you go there it's just showing you where these parts were downloaded so you I think you have to keep those there but just know that you can ignore those things kind of at the end what you do need though is to create a new assembly now when it creates this it's going to create the assembly at the end of all of the parts uh, I'm going to take this and drag it back to the beginning by holding down on the mouse button and put it way back at the front so I know where it is, so I'm not getting confused. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, this video is going to be to help you. Um, it is not really supposed to be a step-by-step -step thing because I'd really like you to think about how you're going to assemble things together um, make some attempts first, make some mistakes so that you have to undo them. Um, the more you play around with this, the better you're going to get at it. Um, so try and think about how you would do this rather than um, just follow step by step. All right, here we go. First thing is um, we've got an assembly. Now, I'm going to put in, there's a few parts. I'll talk about them in just a minute. It's too hard to flip back and forth. We're going to make what's called a sub-assembly. It's an assembly that will then go into the bigger assembly later. So um, let's start by inserting three things. And they all are things that start with the word shoe. So we're gonna do the shoe, the shoe bottom, and the shoe top, okay? And when those come in, if you hover your mouse around, you should be able to see all three of them. Click, we'll put all three of them in. Green check mark says we're good. We've got the parts we want. And we're gonna make an assembly out of these. Okay, so here's how this works. This, this part and this part really are supposed to be like they're two different, or like it's one solid part. And then this little thumb screw dude goes in here so you can turn it with your thumb, right? Um, and tighten the, um, the base part. So um, here's probably the best way to do that. So the screw is going to go into here and it's going to rotate, right? Um, it's going to stay in place, but it is going to rotate. So think about what you're going to do to put that in there. Go ahead and pause the video and try it. And then we'll talk about how I would do it. All right. So I personally would choose to do a revolute because I don't want it to slide. Um, I just I want it to stay in place, but I want it to um, turn. So that's a revolute mate. Now, when we hover over this, I'm going to hover over the circle. It's hard to find it sometimes because, especially because I, I made a bunch of little uh, things on here. But if you hover over that circle right there, it should show up. There it is. Okay. So that is down inside of there in the center of that circle. So it's a little tricky to find it. Now, I click to choose one. I now need to click to choose the other. So that's when we're going to zoom out, learn to use your mouse to move around and zoom into this guy. And again, you have to hover a little bit because, and there's that make connector that shows up blue axis the way I want it to be. Click on that. There we go. Now, once I hit the green check mark, remember it's going to leave, it's going to assume I want to make another revolute, which I don't. So I'm going to get rid of that window that just popped up. All right, cool. Now, don't forget that you can see how this thing goes by going to the um, to that thing and animate it. Okay, it will bring up the window and it'll show you what it's going to do. Okay, so this is kind of fun. So right now it's on reciprocate, which is why it's going two different directions. It goes a full rotation one way and then the full rotation the other way. So you can see what it's going to do. All right, now this is going to fit onto that. So it's like it's glued together. So 
think of ways we could do that. There's a couple ways. We could use planar mates where we say, I want one plane to be along with another plane. You could lock that plane right there to that plane and then that plane to that plane and then glue that to that, all with planar mates. Um, but since I want those two pieces to be glued together and fixed together, that's where the fasten mate comes in handy. So remember the fasten mate takes any two things and it locks them together in that spot so they can't move in any way. It takes all degrees of freedom away. So whereas like this guy took away all but one degree of freedom, a revolute still allows a spin around an axis. All right, so here's how I would do that. Choose fasten mate and find a spot on here that works. Um, that's facing the wrong way. I don't think I can be in the middle of that because that doesn't translate to the bigger one. I could be right in the middle there or, or at this tangent point. I think that would work. So I think I'll do that. Click on the tangent point. Now I got to come over here and find that tangent point that I hope I remember was the right one. Undo is your friend. Cool. If it ended up going the wrong way, you know, if you're flipped, don't forget that, oh, it's inside of the other one. You've got this flip. You've got to rotate where you're like, oh, wait, where do I want it to rotate to? Okay, so you've got options for that. Cool. And I'm gonna get out of that window. All right, so um, that is the way that the little thing called the shoe is supposed to be. So um, cool, we got that one done. I would encourage you if you want to, to recolor these things, if you want them to look a little bit different. In the assembly environment, um, if you want to go to a part, you can right click on that part um, and say go to, um, Go to item and list, is that what I mean? No, that's showing it there. Um, you can actually uh, open this part. Um, how do I do that? Copy, blah, 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 export. Um, oh, switch to shoe bottom. That will take you to the actual part, okay? There we go. So, um, so you can actually do that from within the assembly. Uh, other things that you can do is you can actually edit in context, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, let's do this, and um, in this assembly, we're going to call it, uh, rename and call it the shoe assembly. It's good to name things. This is going to be helpful later. Whoops. Not there. there we go. Okay. All right, now we're ready to start putting the, the actual selfie stick together. So we're gonna do another assembly, the main assembly. In fact, let's just go ahead and name that right now and call it main assembly. We don't need to call it selfie stick assembly because we know we're in the selfie stick document. You know, we're gonna have one document for major things. All right. So now in the main assembly, we're going to insert um, a bunch of stuff. So we're going to insert anything that doesn't say shoe this time. So that should be, I think, five pieces. One, two, not shoe stuff. Three, four, five. Okay, so we should have those five things. Okay, and then click we're going to go to assemblies instead of part studios and we're going to insert that shoe assembly. Okay. Click. And we've inserted six things because one of the things we inserted was a, an, a, an assembly. All right, cool. So we're ready to start putting this thing together. Now, um, it's a good idea when you get started because everything's going to relate to everything else to fix something in place. And I think the most major part that we should fix in place is probably this tube that you hold on to. Um, so now, first of all, all everything this and this and this is kind of oriented in one direction. You'll see how it comes together in a minute. 
So I think I want to orient that similar to that by clicking on the part. And then you can do things like rotate it um, to, you can even insert how much you want to rotate it. 90 degrees showed up. It did show up. I'll put it in 90. I can type it in also. There we go. And just clicking will leave it in place. Now, now that I've got this where I want it, um, it's a good idea to look over here and see if something's fixed. I'm going to take that part and fix it in place. Okay, now it's showing that it's not going to move around. I can move everything else around. So I can move this. I can move this piece. I can move that piece. But when I try and move this, it doesn't go anywhere because it's fixed in place. So that helps things not be quite so wonky. All right. Now this tube is going to fit down into this tube. Um, and it slides in and out and it binds in so you can adjust how far out it's sticking. Um, so think about what you want to do to have that go in there. Um, you do want it to move in and out of the tube. It's kind of up to you as to whether you want it to spin or not. So how about you give that a shot and then you can see what I'm going to do about it. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I think I will do a... Um, we're going to do a slider later. So I think I'll do a um, cylindrical. Remember, cylindrical allows it to move both in and out and spin around at the same time. So we'll do a cylindrical mate. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see the end point of that. And rather than do the end point, I'm going to find the middle. It will find the middle of that tube. Click on that. Okay. And Green check mark says, OK, I don't want to do any more cylindricals. And so this thing will move in and out and it will spin. Now, um, by the way, I didn't show at the beginning. One of the ends is closed. So if you made the mistake of, uh, of trying to go into that closed end, you can always uh, flip things around. You can even do it now. Like I could take this guy, flip it around, or you can come to... Assemblies are weird because escape doesn't work, so you sometimes have to just click somewhere off of the part. Um, or you can go here to the cylindrical mate and say, whoops, I wanted the direction to go the other way. Okay, so that's always an option, flipping the way the cylindrical mate works. Now, um, cool thing to do in assemblies is you can actually make it be exactly what you want. Obviously, we don't want this thing popping up out of here. Um, and we don't want it to go down through the bottom. Uh, so we can change how far this is going to go and limit how far it's going to go. So here's how to do that is, is we can double click on cylindrical one. You may have done a slider. If you did a slider, it's the same idea. And you're going to create some limits. Okay. Now, if you did a slider, you'll only show distances. This one is saying, how far do you want it to rotate also? So I'm going to leave the rotation alone. Now, what do you want it to go from and to? So one of the things that's going to be tricky here is noticing which way the Z axis goes. Um, so I think I want it to go from, I don't know, right here to maybe, so I'll have it go from zero to like 10 inches. Let me show you how to use the measure tool in a moment. And let's see how that goes. So now when I grab this and move it, oh, I think I did the wrong way. Um, so I should have gone from 0 to negative 10 because the z-axis is pointing down. So it considers positive down. So it considers the other direction negative. So let's try that. Hmm. I didn't like that because it's turning red. Red means it's impossible to do that. Um, it said minimum mate limit should be smaller than the maximum mate limit. Okay, so I think what I have to do is I have to say I want it to go from negative 10 to 0. Try that. And now it will go up to, wow, up to there. That's way too far and down to there. So 
sometimes you got to play around with these until you find what you want. So let's try negative, like negative five and five. See how that looks. So now let's see what happens. Now I can move it down to there and stops there. Move it out and it stops. Ah, there's some still sticking in there. So good. I think that's going to work. I like that. Um, okay. So next is there's this little um, Y-shaped dude that's going to stick on top of um, this guy. So this little protrusion sticks in there. Um, this is a good place where I think the intention is this for this to be glued on there. So, um, so we'll do a fastened mate. Now, one thing to notice about this part is it's got a hole going all the way through one side, but only part way through the other. So the idea is that there's a bolt going through here that's going to clamp that onto the shoe and keep the shoe from moving around. So fix mate. Try it without seeing what I do first and just see what you can do or fastened me and uh, see how it goes. And if it doesn't work out, you can watch me do it. All right, here's how I think I'm going to deal with that is do a fastened mate. Find the middle of that. Click on it. Zoom. You got to learn how to zoom in and out here. And this time I'm not going to go to the top because then it it's going to get glued down hovering over that guy. There we go. It's on the shoulder. Did I not click? There we go. Good. Looks good. Again, if you want to recolor things so that it's not all gray, be my guest. Um, you can actually do this. Let's show this now. Um, if I wanted to recolor this, for example, I can say I want to edit this in context. Where is that? Edit in context. And it will kind of gray everything else out. Now, notice it's showing you that you're in the stick adapter part, right? Um, but, it is, um, but it is also showing the assembly. So when I'm done working on it, I can say, just go back to the assembly. So that's kind of fun and easy to deal with. So right now, um, I'm going to import one. That's the step file. Add appearance to feature. And I don't know. Make it whatever you want to make it. Make it a weird looking green. And then we can go to assembly. And now we're back in the assembly again. All right. Now this is where the shoe is going to go. Remember the shoe assembly that we made? Um, so this time I think we'll do a revolute command again because I want it to rotate but not move in and out or or whatever. So um Try it, see how it goes, and then come back if you need to. So Revolute. I'm going to find the center of that hole right there on the outside, and then spin around. I don't want it to be the inside of one of those holes. It doesn't matter which side. There we go. That guy works. Cool. Now, this is probably where you'll have to do this with me because this gets a little bit tricky. No, I don't want to make another Revolute. Double click on Revolute 1, see what you did. So right now it's at zero degrees. Um, and I don't like where that is because I'd like it to be pointing straight up. Yours may have gone straight up. Um, it, it depends on a lot of different factors. But my guess is that it probably went to the side like this. And one of the cool things you can do is you can say, I want to reorient the secondary axis, which means I want to reorient what it's snapping to. And if you click on that, now notice it didn't bring this other part because it's only fixated on the part that's touching it right now. Um, so when I flicked it up, flipped it up and it went to the right spot. Now it might've gone the other way. You might've gone down inside and you go, whoa, that's not what I want. So you just keep clicking on reorient axis until it's the way that you want it to be. Uh, and then click your green check mark, and that other part will pop back up to it and reapply those mates. Um, so now it's where we want it to be. Okay. Now, the one thing I don't like is if you um, kind of zoom in on this, 
oh, I didn't notice this. My, I don't know how you got yours, but my view cube is not, if I click on the view cube, it's still tilting things, okay? So if I wanna look at something straight on, I should be able to um, click on a plane and view normal too, there we go. And then you, you can look straight on. Now notice that this is not in the center, right? Maybe okay if you don't care, but um, I like things centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that Revolute and just like we did on the shoe, create an offset. Um, so of like 0 0.02, I think is what we did on the last one. Enter, whoops, that's going the wrong way. That's going into it. So how about negative 0 0.02? There we go. Now we could do the math and figure out to make it exactly in the middle, but I, I'm not really worried about that right now. Cool. Um, oh, maybe we never did do that on the shoe. I'm gonna talk about how to do that on the shoe assembly also. Let's, um, let's do that right now. Let's go back to the shoe assembly. Now, I don't know if I double click on this. Let's say, Oh, switch to shoe assembly. So that's really interesting. There we go. So there's the shoe assembly. Now, if we take a look at the shoe assembly straight on, one thing I forgot earlier is I wanted to create, I wanted to put this little thumb screw right in the middle. So the revolute command is the one that holds that there. If I double click on that, I can create an offset okay, to move it. Uh, let's try 0 0.02, like is. Oop, wrong way. So remember, if it goes the wrong way, it's just change it to a negative and it should do that. Cool. All right. That's what I wanted. Now, when I go back to the main assembly, it should show that. There we go, because it will update as we go along. All right. Next is we're going to put this little base part that holds the phone onto, uh, onto this screw, because this screw is what holds that base on. And um, I think this time, even though the intent is for that to move in and out and screw on and off, it's still going to stay there. So I'm going to use a uh, gonna use a fasten mate. You try it, then see what happens. So fasten mate. I'm going to choose the bottom of that in the middle, and then this circle right here, not up at the screw, but um, there we go. Click on that and it fastened it, it, held it right to the spot that I wanted it to be. Okay, really I would consider this to be the front side. All right, now we have a problem. And the problem is, and this is no joke, wherever I got these parts from, I didn't build all this, I got it from somebody else. So. Um, I think this is supposed to have a hole in it that this thing is supposed to slide down into. Um, but they didn't make that. So we're gonna do that now. Um, so in order for me to know what I'm doing with this, I've gotta use the measure tool. So um, measure tool can come in really, really handy. It'll turn me off. So down here in the bottom right hand corner is a measure tool. So the first thing I need to know is what are the diameters of these things? So if you zoom in, it says select any of these to measure. I want that circle right there. And it's giving me a diameter of quarter of an inch, 0.25. Let's find out what the diameter of this guy is. Measure tool. Let's click on that circle. And it's 0.2. All right. So, um... We're going to make a hole. Now, the other thing I need to know is how long is this guy? So let's measure from the bottom of that to, oh, geez, sorry, guys. I'm zooming in and out all over the place to maybe the top of that. Um, so that says this distance of the, basically of this cylinder is 1.5. All right, let's see what the length of these guys is. So I'm going to measure again from that to that. 
and that's 2.25 inches. Notice if you hover over it, it'll tell you, it'll show you what it's measuring. Uh, so an inch and a half deep hole will work out just fine. All right, so here's what we're going to do then. Now we'll edit this in context, right? So we don't have to jump back and forth. Edit in context. Okay, now I'm working on just this part. Um, I need to create a sketch where those circles are. This time I'm not going to zoom normal because I don't need to. I'm going to place a point inside of you. So I'm going to hover over that and kind of move in. And that square means I'm right in the middle of that circle. Hover, move. Now we're right in the middle. If it's blue, you did something wrong. So they should be black right in the middle of those. Say yes, I've got a sketch. And now we're going to make a hole on each one of those points. So you click the hole command, click one point, click the other point. Now it remembered this because I actually practiced this earlier that I made a 0.2 diameter hole. Now you're probably going to see through um, and it's going to be when by default, it's going to be a one inch hole and it's going to look all crazy. It's going to look like that, right? It's going to look really weird. Um, so you have to change it from instead of it's a simple hole, but instead of going through, it's blind because it doesn't go through everything. And we're going to change it to the same diameter as the other part. And we're going to make it a depth of 1.5 inches. I'll type that in again anyway, just because. And good. Okay. Now, now that we're done, we can go to assembly. Um, and then finally, our second to last thing to do is to take this guy. Now this time we're gonna do a slider because we don't want it to spin, right? It's gonna fit down inside of these holes. So we're gonna do a slider command, or slider mate, choose the bottom of one of those guys, and then choose either that or I think maybe the middle. I think I'll choose the middle. Cool. Don't need that window anymore. And now this piece will slide in and out. Now here's where things get kind of weird because not only does this piece slide in and out, but this slides in and out. So when I grab this and try and move it, it's actually doing both at the same time and it's going to rotate and get kind of weird. One thing you can do if you want to just see what's happening is we can take this part and temporarily fix it. Now I've got two pieces fixed that should move independently of each other, but they won't now. But I can turn that back off later. And now I can kind of see what's happening. So I think we'll do this again where we take that slider and double click on it. And let's create some limits. Um, so right now it's there. So let's go up and down. This was two inches, so let's go up and down maybe from negative, I don't know, let's go three-fourths of an inch and see how that looks. Negative three-fourths of an inch to three-fourths of an inch. And see how that goes. You can animate it, and it will show you what it's doing. Okay, let me try that one more time. It's going now. Okay, the problem is I don't know which way is... Um, I don't know which way is positive. It looks like that's positive. So I think I only want it to go the other way, 0.5. And again, you have to play around with this a little bit. Hmm. Let's try that again. It's going. Maybe I don't want it to go down at all. Let's try to zero. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Seems to be going down. Oh, I think I've got this the wrong way. Let's try 0.75. There we go. That's what I wanted it to do. Oh, but now it doesn't like it. It's saying that that, that your, your smaller number has to be smaller than the maximum. So that's, I have to just flip it. And again, you guys got to play around with this stuff, right? And figure it out. Sometimes it's like a puzzle. Let's try that. Hmm, why doesn't it want to, oh, for crying out loud. Okay, now I get it. I'm going to go from 
seven five at the biggest to zero. And know what I just had it at. Ah, zero to negative 0.75, it won't like that. Yeah, it still doesn't like that again. I think I've figured it out, and we're going to flip the direction. No, nope. flip the primary axis. Um, so if it's going from, I thought I have it, had it figured out. Maybe I'll go from zero. Oh, it's 0.75 that way. So again, I needed to go from negative 0.75 to zero. And, hmm, I'm not sure why it's still going in and out. Well, I've got it close to what I want. Again, I can we'll probably figure it out, but not during this video because I just want you to learn basics of how to do it. All right, cool. So sliders done. Everything else is done. Pretty cool. Got our, our selfie stick. Now I can't move that because I had fixed this other part. So I'm going to say I want to unfix it. And now things are moving in and out, spinning, doing what I want it to do. All right, last thing to do is that there is supposed to be an adjustable screw in here that will allow you to tighten this to have a, a, a squeezed fit in here so that this thing will stay where you want it to stay. So we're going to put a bolt in here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty neat. First of all, we need to get a measurement of that diameter. So that is a 0 0.201 diameter hole. Now, I'm going to show you the reason why we needed to know that is we need to know what size bolt to put in there. So we're going to add another part. But this time, watch this. Insert. Instead of inserting parts from this document or parts from other documents, we're going to go to this thing called standard content right here. Standard content is, is stuff that, um, that Onshape has that they will import for you. So there are a bunch of stuff in here like bolts and screws, nuts, pins, retaining rings, washers, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. So yours might look a little different than mine. It probably comes up uh, hex bolts or whatever first. It'll show you what it's going to look like. And um, it's going to show you what, what to do. Now, I think that's a little heavy for this little thing. So I think... I think a good idea would be to use um, a socket head screw. A socket head screw has a little Allen wrench thing in it. Um, now, this is remembering what I had before. It'll probably come up as a quarter 20, but this hole was only 0 0.2 something, so you can't put a 0.25 bolt in there, right? So we'll learn about measurements with bolts and screws and stuff later on, but let's do what's kind of a normal thing, which would be a 1024 is kind of a standard bolt. And I think that size is, if I remember right, it's 0.19, which will work perfect to go into that hole. So it's a 1024. Okay. Now we need to know how far we need it to go. So we're going to need to do another measurement. I wonder if I can measure while I've got this window open. Let's try it. Measure. Oh, cool. So we can go, how far is it from that face to that face? It's 1.05. So I want my bolt to be a little smaller than that. So a one inch bolt will work out because otherwise it's going to stick out the end or not make it far enough. Whoops, and when I hit escape, um, it took my window off. But that's okay. Insert standard content. You'll usually remember what you had going on. So a 1024 is a good size bolt and a one inch long. You can make it out of stainless steel. It's all this stuff. Ooh, titanium. Let's make a titanium bolt. Okay, you don't have to worry about cost right now. Later on, you will. Uh, so finish, you can do whatever you want, you know, let's just do zinc, you can do whatever color you want. And now we're going to insert. When you click insert, it will allow you, see if you hover around, it will actually go into that little spot for you. Or you can just 
click somewhere else and put it in later, but it will automatically create that, um, that insertion point for you if you hover over where it's going to go. Cool. Now, for whatever reason, when you put in one of their features, it's going to leave this guy on. So you can click on that little thing and say, hide all make connectors, and it will make that go away. All right, congratulations, you have finished the selfie stick. Now don't click off yet because I want you to do something before you turn it in. So you're gonna kind of get it skinny and long over by your browser. And then before you take the picture, right click and say show all. And now it's showing all of your mates that you made for this thing. Okay, um, take a picture that includes your name up here and the browser, wanna see what was going on in the browser. And, um, and turn that in. Now, when you don't wanna see these anymore, it's a little weird. You have to go kind of click on one and right click and say, hide all mates, but sometimes it only does it for the one part. So if you right click, hide all mate connectors, there we go. So it'll either say hide all mates or hide all mate connectors, and that'll get rid of it so it looks pretty for you. All right, hope that worked out. Enjoy. See you next time.